All right. Shalom, Israel. I'm preaching novice of a thousand from my young. I got with me preaching novice of 500. Shiratazah Halak and Triple Razan. And this is the ISBK Florida history class. Okay. Today we're teaching about a very, very ancient place in Palm Beach, Florida that was called the Sticks. The Sticks of Palm Beach. A lot of people don't know about this history because the white man tried to sweep it up under the rug and get rid of this history. But us in the ISBK, we're going to bring this history right back out, man, and put it right back in these devil's faces and let them know that we never forgot what you've done to our people. All right? So, uh, hello. She wants us out a lot. Can you, uh... I don't count. Okay, we're going to bring out what do the sticks mean? What's the definition of the sticks? Because when you look at the word, it's spelled S-T-Y-X. Okay? Sticks is known in English to be spelled a different way. But this way is spelled different. It's spelled S-T-Y-X. And that's a Greek terminology. And we we gonna look it up, okay? Uh, hello, you got the definition, the Greek definition of of sticks. Kanawaka. <clears throat> the Greek definition of sticks. It says sticks. In Greek mythology, one of the rivers of the underworld. The word sticks literally means shuddering and expresses loathing of death. Okay, so if the Styx is a river in the underworld, what did they what did they really call in this place? They call this place hell. The underworld is another place for hell. And our people was in hell when they stayed in the community over there at Palm Beach. Palm Beach is an island that's located in Palm Beach, Florida. Palm Beach County, Florida. Okay? This is the place where Donald Trump stayed, the ex-president. He stayed in the island of Palm Beach. Okay? This is this where you got all the billionaires at. Uh, from my research, it's 54 billion, no, my bad, it's, it's 54 billionaires over there on the island of Palm Beach. 54 billionaires. Okay? That's not a billionaires. To be on one island. All right, but a long time ago, it was just a community of black people, and, and it was just white people over there working. There was there was a stand over there, okay. But they see this waterfront that they wanted so bad to stay on that they said, you know what? We we want that waterfront, and we're gonna do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get those Negroes from off that island. And for that island to be our backyard or our place of vacation, our heaven, them little girls don't belong over there. Okay? All right? And uh, when we read on in this article that I'm about to post very soon, we're going to read about what happened. Okay? And what we need to never forget about the sticks of Palm Beach. All right? And uh, another reason why they call this place the sticks because... The black people houses, it was it was it was basically made of shanties. Okay, uh, hello, Shabbat Can you give me um uh, the definition of shanty? Kanam Khan. Definition of shanties. <clears throat> shanty. Go ahead. It says. Okay, shanties. All right, I have. Hold on, it's coming up. Okay, let, let me know you got it up. Got on, got on. Okay, shanty is basically like uh, little shacks. Little shacks made out of wood. 
it's a it's a very very poor condition, and that's why it was called the sticks because it made these shanties were made out of wood, basically sticks. <laughs> you know, the white man got all his types of terminologies. You know what I mean? But this he was actually calling this place hell, and it was hell. But now when you look at the island of Palm Beach, it is heaven. It is not hell no more. Okay, but they had to put black people through hell to get that heaven they have over there. Okay, uh, it was a it was a devil named Henry Flagler, Henry Morrison Flagler. He hired, if I'm not mistaken, two thousand black people to do labor on the island of Palm Beach and on the railroad of Southeast Florida, going all the way down the coastline. From Jacksonville, Florida, all the way down to Key West. I mean, or Homestead. All right, this this devil was a, became a developer for the Southeast region of Florida, and he he became rich off black free labor, man. Okay, so we gonna um, get into this article. All right, a uh, lot. We're not gonna um, do the uh, uh, the introduction. We're not gonna do Hosea four and six right now. We're just going to go into the article, all right? Come on, come so let's start with Huh? I got a definition of shanty if you still want it. Go ahead. All right, shanties. Webster's Dictionary. A small, crudely built dwelling or shelter, usually of wood. Like I said, a little small shack. The small shack is made of wood. Basically sticks. Know what I mean? And that's why also it was called the sticks. Okay, these, these places that our people stayed in was worse than the homes of the slaves that, that was on the plantation. You know, on the plantation, they had uh, little shacks, but the shacks on the island of Palm Beach were way more in a, in a, hor in a horrible condition, man. It was basically hell. All right? So you, you got an article on Shiratazai? Come on, come. Go ahead. Come on, sir. The sticks and early West Palm Beach, late 19th, early 20th century. Black settlement of southeastern Florida. Black and settlement. She said black settlement. All right. That let, that let you know that we say that. I hear echo. All right. Read on. In the late 19th century, standard oil tycoon Henry Morrison Flagler brings the Florida East Coast. Right, right there. It says, it says that Henry Flagler was a tycoon. What, what's another, what's a, the definition of tycoon? Do, we, do anybody know? It says Henry Flatler was a tycoon. Come on, come on, sir. Go ahead, Warren. Tycoon, a wealthy, powerful person in business or industry. Man, yes, he was. And, not, and also, Henry Flatler was not from Florida. Henry Flatler came from Ohio. First, he sold wheat, then, he sold uh, gas, oil. His uh, company was called <coughs> Standard Oil. Today, Standard Oil is, is uh, the gas station called Exxon. Do anybody know about Exxon? You got BP, you got Exxon, you got Mo uh, uh, Mobile, okay? But uh, when you see Exxon, that came from Henry Flatt, all right? And uh, he, he, he decided to take his money that he made off oil and become a developer. In Florida, all right. Read on, and and also hold on, and also Henry Flatler, he used a lot of, uh, what do you call it, convict leasing, convict leasing. Do anybody in the classroom know what convict leasing is, or have you ever? Do you know the definition of convict leasing? Go ahead. 
convict leasing was a system of forced penal labor, which was historically practiced in the Southern United States and overwhelmingly involved African-American men. Mm -hmm. It was basically, it was also, you know, is, you say penage? Penal, penal labor. Penal labor, spell that? P-E-N-A-L. Penal. Which, Colonel Khan, which is explicitly allowed by the 13th Amendment of the U U.S. Constitution. Okay, basically prison labor. Colonel prison Khan. labor. Okay, this this this, this what convict leasing, leasing is. Convict leasing is prison labor, another form of slavery. Florida was basically built of slave labor. Okay, and also Henry Flatler he used sharecropping to put people, to make people also build Florida by making them work for free. Because sharecropping, you can put your price on on your crops, okay? Sharecropping is uh, the slaves coming on your land and uh, growing crops in your land. And you put you put, putting a price on them what they should pay, okay? These slave owners basically put high prices on the slaves so they end up in the end in debt. And how they worked off that debt? By working for Henry Flatler on the railroads and also in Palm Beach, especially in the, on the island of Palm Beach. Okay? Right. Read, read on, Shabbatazar. Hold on, come on, sir. <clears throat> Railway from West Palm Beach to Miami. African-Americans, laborers, help construct the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. Palm Beach County is still part of Brevard, of Salakia, Brevard, St. Lucie, and Dade County. Yeah, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a county yet. It wasn't a county yet, all right? Read. God. In the second half of the 19th century, it is not established as a separate county until 1909. Miami and West Palm Beach become Florida's two largest urban centers. Blacks from the deep south are recruited to work the farms in Florida's agricultural areas. So this was, a, this was, a, okay, this place after the Civil War, is with the, the main place in Florida where you had black people. Palm Beach County and Miami, Dade County, Florida. Okay, but Dade County was before Palm Beach. All right. Palm Beach didn't become a county until 1909. All right, go ahead. Connor Con. Those who live in, in rural areas usually live near whites or in shanties on white owned farms. Okay, in, in, in the states, the states was one of these areas. Okay, will you read that word again? On what is that? Come on, come. The word rural. those who live in rural areas mm -hmm. usually, usually live near whites or in shanties. On white owned farms. So if so if uh the sticks was a rural area, right? That means what? How many people stayed there? Was it was it a big place or a small place? It was actually a very small place. Go ahead, Warren. No, I was just gonna answer the question. Go ahead. No, it, it was a. Uh... It was it was like a, a place, it was like a place with not much people living there, like about up to twenty five hundred people. Right, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, read. Come on, come. Those who live in rural areas usually live near whites or in shanties on white owned farms, always under the surveillance of white authorities. Hmm. Slavery all over the land. Go ahead. That's it on that one, sir. Now, go to the next article. Okay. 
1894, the city of West Palm Beach is founded. The city of West Palm Beach is founded on November 5th, 1894. It is the first incorporated municipality in Dade County and in Southeast Florida. Mm -hmm. Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in West Palm Beach houses the first school for African Americans in Palm Beach County. Let, let, let me get to this, let, let get to that story about what happened. Matter of fact, read, read, read from um, uh, read from what it says uh, from the the early eighteen nineties. The early eighteen nineties, kind of yeah. Uh, what, what, what part where you was at? You was uh, I was on the like the second paragraph. Where it said flat flat is decides to build two hotels. No, not that one. Um, hold on, I'm trying to find where you at. Uh, yeah, this, this really, really what it says an estimated 2,000 African Americans. Okay, which part you want, sir? The 19th, uh, 1890 and early 1890s, the states. Okay. 1890. Okay, I got it. 1890. All right. Uh, 1890, early 1890s, the sticks. Flagler decides to build two hotels, the Breakers and Royal Ponisiana, on the island of West Palm Beach. These hotels are built by black laborers. So if you ever was a go to the island of Palm Beach and you see those two big old hotels, man, you're going to see it if you ever come to downtown West Palm. You're going to see those two big motels on that island. Just know that we, we had built those motels, man. Okay? And also, we built West Palm Beach. And also, we built America. Don't you never forget that. We built this whole damn place, man. All right? And these damn devils don't want to share the wealth. That's why we need to separate. We got to separate so we, we can have our own. All right. But we'll never have our own if we keep sharing our, our, whatever we work for with these white people, you know, or keep working for these damn devils. We'll never have nothing, man. You, you see how this story tells you that we built that, that heaven over there, that island over there. We built that place. And guess what? We're not even allowed to go over there after a certain time. And you're not allowed to go over there, period, unless you're working over there. If you're not working over there, man, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> and, if you, and if you're from Palm Beach or Miami, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You might get thrown over the bridge and be swimming in that intercoastal if you get caught over there. Because they don't want your black tail over there. All right? So uh, read on. Kind of hey, we, got any, uh, we, we got any scriptures for you? We got any scriptures? Khan, sir. Um, we have the book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 11. If the truth oh, yeah, is on, yeah. troop was on, if you can, if you could. Khan, you said Psalms 49 and 11? Khan. Khan, Khan. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 11. Uh -huh. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Oh, man. When they, when they put us to work and uh, don't pay us nothing and beat our backs in, forcing us to build a heaven, their attention, their attention is what they're what they thinking inside is that their house will always stand to, from generation to generation, okay, that's what the Bible means forever. When, it, when the Bible talking about talking about everlasting life, it's talking about from generation to generation, from your from your son to, to his son, okay. The, the house is gonna get passed down through, through all his nation, man, 
And they always gonna rule. They always gonna rule. They always gonna be in the in the best places of the earth, man. That's his intentions. Read. Donald Khan. And their dwelling place places. It's like it. And their dwelling places to all generations. Like I just said. <laughs> Go ahead. Donald Khan. They call their lands after their own names. America. It's called after a uh, American. No, my bad. Uh, Italian navigator, Amerigo Vespucci. Uh, what else? Africa. The white man over there calling himself South African man, <laughs> but he he called Africa Africa's name after him. I don't give a damn how much the Egyptologists try to prove us wrong about it. Uh, the damn Romans defeated Hannibal and then called that place Africa after. Scipio, what well, Leo Scipio Africanus, man. You gotta look it up. Do research, man. Everywhere you go, the white man put his name on that land. And guess what? You can't do nothing about it because he colonized you. He civilized you to the point where you don't even read to know that these names are named after him. So when you calling yourself American, just know you calling yourself the son of a white man. Okay. When you call yourself African, you say you come from a white man. Look, look at here. I'm not, I don't come from two white men, okay? Black people, you do have a faux fault. Okay, stop calling yourself American. Hispanic man, quit calling yourself Spanish. You're not you're not a Spaniard, okay? You're not Puerto Rican, you're not Mexican. Stop calling yourself by the name of these damn oppressors who really just want to rule you forever. And that's why they put their names on the land. Guess what? They even put their names on you. They even put their names on you because that they feel they feel that this land gonna be their property forever. And guess what? And your black behind, okay, or your brown behind gonna be their property forever. Read on, warrior. Come on, Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. You start right there. You start right there. A lot. You got, you got, uh, Shabbat Shalom. You got anything else? Khan, you, you want uh, Isaiah forty-two and twenty-two? Yeah, yeah. Let me get that too. Khan. Isaiah forty-two and twenty-two. You got it. You got it, true. Khan, Khan, you said. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42. And 22. Colonel Khan. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. This is a people robbed and spoiled. Everything we build over here, man, the white man and the rest of these nations, they eat it up. They eat it up to the point where we don't have nothing and we destroy it. Hey, man, who, who fried chicken better than black people? Better than that black woman. But now the Asian man is famous for fried chicken. I mean, he in your neighborhood selling you fried chicken that's ain't got nothing to your black woman fried chicken. They fried chicken to me is horrible, man. If I had to go get their chicken, it, it would be the last resort. <laughs> now I'm just hungry, man. But they in our neighborhood giving us their disgusting food, man. We, we got the best food on earth, man. Why don't we have any black businesses, man? Hey, what, what happened to the nigga? What happened to the nigga pies? I mean, what, what happened to the, all those black owned stores, the black buses, the black banks? I'll tell you what happened, man. When we, when we do get these places, man, the white man dropped bombs on them, man. He dropped bombs on them. He can't stand to see us come together because when we come together, it is a threat to him. It's a threat to his heaven because the white man don't like working. He can't work. He can't work too long, man. That's what he need us for. He he need us to build up his civilizations and to work on his jobs. You know what I mean? So he can stay in heaven, man. Okay? Read on. They are all of them snared in holes. Mm-hmm. And they are hid in prison houses. They are hid in prison houses. Read on. They are for a prey. 
They are for a prey. They are for a prey. That's what we are in this place. We they look at us as prey. In their constitution, we three fifths of a human being. We three fifths of a human being. Why? Because they look at us as prey. Okay. Either you gonna work, or you gonna die. Okay. Those that's your two options: work or die. If you don't want to work, you are gonna become prey, and you gonna you gonna be in the in prison houses, and they're gonna make you work for free, or you are gonna die. Okay. There's a brother. What's it? What's that brother name? Um, Shabbatan Zai, Terrell, uh, Terrell Black. Terrell Black. Yeah, Carnival Concert. Hey, uh, Trooper Razan, show that picture of what the police did to this brother. How the police put his damn canine dog on this brother, man. This happened in Gainesville, Florida, if I ain't mistaken. Gainesville, Florida, man. This dog terrorized this brother, man. If if, we, if you see this picture, man. It is disgusting. It's horrible. It's horrible. But we are for a prey. Give it. You, you do you have the one where he got his eyeball? Where he, it showed where he lost his eyeball. You want you want the one with the patch? No, nah, it, it's one. I might. I think I'm about to send it to you. I mean, it, it is horrible, man. You, you ain't got that one, um, Sharon Design. Got on count, sir. I'm about to send it to the truth. Yeah, man, but this this horrible too. This horrible too. This is what they came out dog did to this man. He put his dog on his, on his black brother for uh not stopping at a stop sign, man. This, this brother had to lose his eye and, and lose one of his fingers, right? Uh, Shabbat Shazai. He lost one of his fingers. Lost, yes, some fingers, sir. Mm-hmm. And the canine ripped his eyes eyes out his socket. Wow, man! All because he didn't stop at a stop sign, man. Well, what else? Hey, uh, you, you know the whole story, right? Cause I read bits and bits and pieces of it. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. God, I read a little bit of the story. The brother was uh, he was basically like some uh, he was an installer. Uh, <clears throat> I get it right now, sir. Mm -hmm. He was an installer. Con, he was installing. What do you say? He worked as a. I get it right now. It says that. It says that a traffic stop ended in a Gainesville police canine ripping out his eye. Terrell Bradley's story is more than the police report. It says, though it was his day off, Terrell Bradley was wearing his electrician work clothes, red wing boots, and cargo pants. Earlier, he installed a ceiling fan for an old older woman. He took his 12-year-old daughter, Tania, his oldest, to a birthday party at Splits Bowling Alley and stuck around to supervise. When he noticed more boys than girls, he dropped her off late that night. As he pulled out of the Sweetwater Square apartment complex, shortly after a Gainesville police report says, he ran a stop sign. The report doesn't mention that there is no stop sign there. Gainesville, mm -mm. Gainesville police officer Andrew Millman initiated a traffic stop and followed Bradley to Eden Park Apartments half a mile down the road. Where stop right there. Mm -hmm. Stop right there, Warren. Give me, we're going we gonna to read on on that. We're going to read on some more about that. But let me get Lamentations chapter 4, verse 18. Man, it said that police followed him from where? It says, it says, it says, um, where is it? Gainesville police. Okay. Gainesville police officer Andrew Millman initiated a traffic stop and followed Bradley to Eden Park apartment. Do you understand what it said? Do you, okay. Y'all y'all gonna feel me on this, right? It said that this police officer, this damn crooked cop, initiated this traffic stop. Y'all know what initiated mean, right? So I can, sir. And in this context, go ahead. That, that he turned on the sirens or something. Yeah, yeah, but what else? Give, give me more. Give me more, man. 
like that he was like following him or he was observing him running his plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was stalking this brother, man. Right. All right. He was stalking this brother. And that, that what Esau do, man. That what Esau do. He good at stalking black and Hispanic men, black and brown men. Like, that what he do every day. All right. Who got Lamentations 4 and 18? Come on, come on, sir. And, and this is why, this is why it's not good that black people stay in this integration state of mind. And this is what happens. By you want to be joined with the white people and equal white people and have fun with white people, you, you, you're not worrying about one of your brothers being hunted down like prey. Being hunted down like, like he's nothing, man. And now this brother got to live without seeing out of his left eye, man. He can't, he don't have a left eye no more. And he don't got a damn finger no more. All because our people want to sit down and eat with goddamn white people. All because Martin Luther King had jungle fever, man. And want to sleep with white women, we gotta die. We have to die, man. But who got that scripture? Come on, come on, sir. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. They hunt our steps. They who? They hunt our steps. They hunt our steps. Okay. Some sometimes they be in that police car. Not sometimes, all the time. There's some. There, there are somewhere right now, somebody neighborhood with the lights off, hiding in the cut, watching you, waiting on you to come out the house. That's why it's so important for brothers to be in the ISBK. Because if you're in the ISBK, you ain't, you ain't out there selling dope, okay? You ain't out there robbing people. What you do, he can't bother you, man. Because what you do is righteous, and the Lord got your back, okay? And what and what you do. You was going, you was coming against this place spiritually, man. You you coming against the white man in a way where he can't do nothing to you. He can't do nothing to you, man. Why? Because you are on the side of the Lord, man. But when you smoke weed, you sell weed, you're on the side with the white man, and you took his bait. And when you take the white man's bait, you got you get caught up in his trap and you become his prey, man. And now he hunting your steps. He can't hunt. The brothers in the ISBK steps. He can't hunt our steps, man. He can't hunt our steps. All right? Because we don't take his damn bait. Okay? His his bait ain't bait to us. We know it's poison. We know it's poison, man. All right? You 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 can smoke all the weed. You can smoke all the weed you want. If you smoke weed, you're not a wise person, man. If you smoke weed, you are a victim of this system. Because now he can hunt your steps. Now he can lock your black behind up, man. Okay, read. Colonel Khan, that we cannot go in our streets. Mm -hmm. Our end is near. Stop right there. And this brother right here, man, this brother, he, he not even selling no damn dope, dope. This brother got a damn job, man. All right? This brother just, what? He just drove past the damn stop sign. And, and for him, driving past the stop sign, he got his steps got hunted. So lock it, sir. Go okay. ahead, no, no It say a Gainesville police report says he ran a stop sign. The report doesn't mention that there is no stop sign there. Wow. Oh, so it, it might be it might be some uh, false paperwork. Right. Something he made up to have an excuse for what he did to his but it just brother, man. Oh, uh, um, all God. right. Yeah, and I bet this cop is not in jail. I bet this cop is at home right now eating him a nice rare steak. I ain't say medium rare. Eating him a nice bloody rare steak, man. Yeah, devil, man. Okay, let's let's get back to the article. You want the uh, to Terrell Bradley? Yeah, let's get back to, to, uh, to Terrell Bradley. Then we're going to get back to the sticks. Connor McCon. Then it says, um, followed Bradley to Eden Park Apartments half a mile down the road where he pulled him over. The report says Millman saw a plastic bag of green leafy stu substance in plain view and described. Oh, yeah, so he did. So it was weed in the picture, huh? Okay, um, go ahead. Connor O'Connor. And describes Bradley making 
sportive mo mo movements towards under the front seat of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Millman asked Bradley to step out for officer safety, which he did. The report describes a struggle to pat Bradley down, during which Bradley's elbow swung and hit Millman and his side. Bradley ran. The report says he didn't respond to orders to stop as several officers and Millman chased him. I got afraid, Bradley told WUFT. I'd been hearing about a lot of incidents where people just been getting killed by mishaps. They lost sight of Bradley. He hid in the bushes of the apartment complex for roughly an hour. Officer so guess what? So guess what happened? Guess what happened? The white man put his dog on. He right. put his dog yeah. on, man. Go ahead. Got him a car. It says Officer Josh uh, Muir brought a leashed canine to track him. After a short struggle, the defendant was placed into custody, the report says. It notes he was unable to make any statements after his right after his rights were read, but it doesn't say why. A search wow. of Bradley's vehicle found a fully loaded Glock pistol under the driver's seat, which had been reported as stolen in a- Now, you know, this is what they do. This is what they do. They try to, they, they don't try to make the brother look so damn guilty and, and, and use that as an excuse of what they did to him, okay? Look at that brother face, man. Look at that brother face. So long here. That brother face is mauled. That dog mauled that brother face, man. So, so you mean to tell me a bag of weed or two bags of weed, a brother running the stop sign, that, that's how he had to pay? He had to pay with that? I, I thought you was innocent to proven guilty. It, it, it's like we get judged before we even see the judge, right? Right. Look at that brother face, man. Look at that brother face. It's horrible. Don't worry about it. God seen what they did. God seen what they did. And God seen what they did in the sticks of Palm Beach as well. Okay? I just brought this out to show you that what happened, what happened back then in the sticks, how they still, how they was violent, they are still violent today. Okay, they are still violent today. Their nature has not changed, black man, Hispanic man. You cannot be drawn to these people. And if you do decide to keep loving these people, your people are gonna keep dying. All right? At an alarming rate. I mean, 10, 10 black people just got killed in a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. The damn white man, I heard he was a homosexual too. He had nigger on the gun, man. He let me know who he, who he wanted to kill, all right? And now another brother again getting beat down, getting, getting his face with the part and mauled by this damn canine, man, all right? It's like them canines, they get, they get real violent too when it comes to black and brown people too, all right? I bet that if that had been a white person, man, that would have never went down. I wanna do they train their dogs to do to do massacres like that to us, man. To mess us up like that. I wanna do they train these dogs to do that. That 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 brother face is hor horrific, man. It's horrific. Look at his left eye, man. That is sad, man. But that's what our people wanna love the white man. This, this is what happened when you love the white man. All right. But our people don't feel bad about this brother because this is not. Their family. This is not their immediate family. This is not their son. Okay, but when it happened to your son, hey, you you gonna want somebody to feel sorry for you, all right? But it shouldn't have to be that way because this brother is black and you're black. So guess what? That make us family. That make us family, man. Your family just don't start with your brother and your sister and your mother and your grandmother. Every black man and every Hispanic man and every Native American Indian man is your family, man. And it's time for us to stop being selfish, man. All right? So let, let's go back to the article, uh, The Sticks of Palm Beach. I don't know. I, 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 I
I put that picture up on Facebook, right? Stop. And they, they, took it, they took it down. They took it down. Even Facebook didn't want to see that brother's eye, man. Even Facebook knew, knew that was messed up. And Facebook is owned by a Jewish man, right? <laughs> a white Jewish man, right? <laughs> they took that down. They took that picture down, man. So lock it, sir. Go ahead. You see, it's, it's funny how they take pictures of these things that, you know, these police officers are doing to us, but they're not taking pictures down of uh, of what's going on in Ukraine. They want right. you to see that. You know what I'm saying? They play it on the news. They put them all up all over the internet. They don't never flag those pictures because they right. want you to feel sorry for them people. Yeah, goddamn America, man. Goddamn America, man. The white man's the devil the Bible speaks of. All right? He's the damn devil. Okay, let's go back to that article. Kind of it speaks upon Bubba kind of That was a heavy point. That was a heavy point. An estimated 2,000 African Americans work at the island's hotels, estates, and golf courses. It was black laborers and their families they hired, says every Jimerson Clark when interviewed by the Palm Beach Post. There were ads in the Philadelphia papers and across the South. They came down by boat from Jacksonville. Uh, These, mm -hmm. They came, hey, they, they came down by boat from Jacksonville <coughs> and Henry Flatley had money. Henry Flatley had billions of dollars, man. And he did not pay these black people. There were 2,000 of them. He didn't pay them. And also, he burnt their houses down, man. He burnt their houses down. So these, these people, our people, they work for free. Their houses got burnt down. And they made a blank trip. They, 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 they should just stay in Jacksonville or wherever they came from. Okay? But this is the white man. This, this is what happened when you make deals with a white man. He always go back on his word. Let, uh, let me get Psalms 55 and 20. Bob and Bishop. Psalms 55 verse 20. Let me know when y'all got it. And y'all can chime in anytime y'all want to, all right? Connor McCarr. Y'all got any questions? Ask them. But go ahead. We have the scripture, sir. Go ahead, Warren. Psalms chapter 55, verse 20. Uh -huh. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. These eight, 2,000 black people so-called African-Americans was at peace with Henry Flatler, was at peace with Palm Beach. And they wanted to work the land, man, and get paid fairly. They was at peace with them. I, I, I build your land, you pay me. Okay? Even, even trade. Go ahead. Cut on cut. He hath broken his covenant. But he broke it. He broke his agreement. He didn't pay. He didn't pay our ancestors, man. And right now, today, he still didn't pay us, man. If the if the white man was to pay us, he will. He, and he would go broke because he owes us over four trillion dollars. If you ask me, he owes us more than that. Okay, I don't. Your your money is not worth the blood of my ancestors, man. The only way you can pay the blood of my ancestors back is with your your blood, man. Now that's how you pay back. Me and my me and my family, man. Me and my nation. Okay, you can't pay me back with your goddamn money, man. Okay, I, I want blood. I want you to go in slavery, just like my family went into slavery, man. I want you to feel what we've been through. Okay. Other than that, you, you have not paid, and the white man don't want to go into slavery, man. He don't want to go to slavery. Hey, the white man don't even want to pay reparations. <laughs> know what I'm saying, we we hey, we dealing with a monster. Okay. But read. Come on, come on. Verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Mm. Go ahead. But war was in his heart. Hey, 
He'll make a sweet deal with you, man. He'll make a sweet deal with you the whole time. That deal he made with you, he made it sound so sweet so you could fall for the trap. And that's what we do all the time, man. We keep listening to his sweet words. Eve in the garden, she'll listen to his sweet words and fell for the trap. And still right now, today is falling for the trap. Okay? He will give you power. He will give you all the power if you serve him, if you work for him. Okay? Yeah, he'll give you all the power. What power he'll give you? Power to destroy your own people. Now, is that power? That is not power, man. That's not power at all. You might think it is, but it's not. I mean, but our people think that's power. A black woman think that's power to be over her man. That is not power. That's not power, man. That's the, that's the destruction of your nation, man. Okay, this is war. He know what he he know what he is doing, man. Okay, when we when we integrated with America, we gave up our power because when we were by ourselves, man, we had power. We had money. Have you ever heard how Black Wall Street? The money in Black Wall Street, it went, it went around in that place a hundred times before it touched a white man's hand. Did y'all know that? Right. The black dollar, the black dollar circulated in Black Wall Street a hundred times before it touched a white man's hand at all, man. God damn, man. That, that, that's amazing, ain't it? So you know you, that, that, that this is this is the reason why they tried to bomb on Black Wall Street because of that reason. They wasn't making no money, okay? Because they they really rely on our money, our dollar, and that's why it's so so important that we take our spirit away from the white man by quit investing in his holidays, quit investing in his that Christian church, quit investing in this place. Period, man, and invest in us. That's what we need to do. Okay, we see the other nations do it all day. The China man, they invest in themselves, and that's and that's why they're successful in America. All the nations are successful in America because they invest their money in their nation, man. Okay, not America. Hey, okay, Walmart might be closed on Christmas, on Christmas, right? But I guarantee you that Arab store stay open. <laughs> Tell me online. Now, Walmart, Walmart going to be closed on Christmas, but that A-Rod man going to stay open on Christmas, man. You know why? Because he don't give a damn about American culture. And, that, and that's how we need to think. Okay? The, 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 the white man told the other nations, hey, I know how you can make some money. Go, go over there to that, that black community, man. They, they, hey, they will spend with you all day. And they and the other nations they fight to come over here to go just to go to your neighborhood and make all the money, man. Okay. So so it, it's very important that we realize that we don't need the other nations, man. We, we you need another black man, you need another Hispanic man. Okay. We need to build together and stop building up America, man. Because when you build up America, all they do is, is take is, is uh, turn their back on you when they agree with on something. Or make a deal with something, they're gonna turn their back, man. They're not gonna keep their word. All right. So let's go back to the article. He has something to say, uh, Sharon. Colonel Khan, I was just thinking about what you were saying, like, like how everything they give us, it just further destroys us. Like, we, you know, he gives us, you know, especially how he used that the black woman, man. Like, you know, he says, Oh, just get rid of the black man, I'll give you welfare and housing. and you know what I'm saying? But it further destroys the black household. The, the kids grow up with no father in the house. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the mother grow up with no husband. You know what I'm saying? And got to take care of these kids. And the kids grow up to be drug dealers, whores. <clears throat> it, it just, everything just further destroys us. Right. And I don't see yeah. how the hell we still think these people are for us when the when these Chinese people these other nations they they come over here just like you said sir and open up businesses and it benefits them but right. nothing they do for us benefits us it just further destroy us damn right damn right warrior all right uh what we had in our article um we had the part where it says right after 
right, right after the paragraph of the an estimated 2,000 African Americans, we had the uh -huh. little part. We had the little part right there where it says these workers were not always paid right away. However, as this clipping attests, uh, read, read the clipping. Come on, come on. It says work on the Royal Ponisiana Hotel began in May 1892, and there was so much trouble in getting currency to pay the workmen by June that Mr. Yeah. Flagler called a meeting of his deputies in Jacksonville for consultation. Ah, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you see? It, did, it, it, it was hard for them to pay all those people, man. Well, it wasn't hard. They, got, they had the money, but they just, you know, matter of fact, let me get Ecclesiastes 10 to 7. Because they, they had the money to pay these people. Okay? Harry, Harry Flatler had the money. But this is the main reason why he didn't want to pay our ancestors, man. These 2,000 African Americans that he hired. I mean, why are you going to hire somebody and don't want to pay them, man? You know what I'm saying? But that, that's the games. This damn old press plays. But give me um, Ecclesiastes. Um, no, my bad. It's uh seven. I think it's seven and um seven to ten where, where it says uh, I'm a paraphrase. Money is a defense. And that. wisdom is a defense. Ten and seven. Yeah, it's ten and seven. Come on, you got it right the first. Yeah, go ahead. Come on, come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter ten, verse seven. You mean Ecclesiasticus? No, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament, not the Apocrypha. No, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing. I have seen servants upon horses. No, I want that. I want Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And I think it's 10 where it says, uh, it might be 12, where it says uh, money is a defense. And Wilson, go ahead. It's 12. It's 12, 7 and 12. The water, warrior. The water. Go ahead. Come on, come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 12. Uh huh. For wisdom is a defense. Uh huh. And money is a defense. Money is a defense. This is why Henry Flatler did not want to pay them workers right away. Okay? It's 2,000 of these workers. Back then, it was segregation, right? Now, how was Negroes in segregation compared to Negroes right now in integration? What were Negroes going to do with that money back then versus to right now? Y'all go ahead. Y'all got the flow. Tell me. They would have so like they they would have spent it with their own. And, and what would happen? Because they did have their own. Right. They did have their own. The oppressor wouldn't see that money for a long time, and um, they they, was, they they were basically invested in black people. You know what I mean, in black in black people back then, because that, that what they were doing back then is the segregation. Back in segregation, we know all we had was each other. Okay, and why and why did we know that? Because back then in the nineteen twenties and tens, white people didn't want to stay around us. They didn't want to go to school with us. They did not want to sit down with us. They hated our guts. They still hate our guts. But back then, they couldn't stand to be around us, especially after they so-called freed us from slavery. They didn't free us. They just freed us from the plantation. Okay? And they didn't like that we wasn't on the plantation no more. Okay? And they could just beat us without nobody seeing it and get away with it. You know what I mean? They didn't want to have a right for them just to beat us when they feel like it. I mean, just to beat us for having our eyes on them. You're looking at me too hard. Now, we got we got a little, we got a, some, some called little rights, you know what I mean? Still don't because you see what they did to us. They burned down our houses and got away with it, man. Right. Okay, at, at, the, at the, the Civil War, you know what they did the, the, to correct black people or to fish black people and to put them back in slavery? They used violence. They used the KKK. Okay? That's what they did, man. 
They, they use Jim Crow laws. I, I know y'all know about them Jim Crow laws. All right? That, that, that's the code to twist the law. It's already twisted anyway. It's already evil. <laughs> but the Jim Crow laws make it more, make it more evil. All right? It, it, it bend to their will. Bend to what they want to do to you when they want to get violent and, and want to taste your, your innocent blood, man. All right? This, this is what they do. Let's read that scripture. Don't come. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 12. For wisdom is a defense. Now read from the top. Baba Kishab. Don't come. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 12. Uh-huh. For wisdom is a defense. For wisdom is a defense. Okay. Money is money and wisdom is a defense. Read. Don't come. And money but, is a but, defense. Um, it's like my bad, warrior. But money and wisdom could defend you in two different ways. And, and one could defend you more better than the other. And we're gonna read about it. Go ahead, warrior. Don't come. And money is a defense. Money is defense. And our people love money. Our people, our people think money can defend them against anything, but that's not true. That's not true. Go ahead. I don't care. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom. The, the, the excellency of knowledge, the, excell the, the excellency of wisdom, read. That wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Oh, man. And what is wisdom? What, a, what is wisdom according to God? Is it money? Wow. Is it is it uh sixty five million dollars so you can go so you can go get you a private jet? Wow. Like Creflo, like Creflo dollar. What, what what is wisdom? Because right here it, it, it's putting the difference between wisdom and money. <laughs> and you can have all the money in the world if you don't have wisdom. While you possess that money, what's gonna happen to that money? Don't lose it. it, it it's like a crackhead. It's like a crackhead who won the lottery, man. What a crackhead! What a crackhead gonna do with the lottery? That lottery money. He gonna give it all to the dope man. All right. Our people, hey, you you get all the money in the world, but you know what they do with their money? They give it all to, back to the white man, huh? And back to the other nations. But wisdom, wisdom, you know what wisdom would do if you had money? Wisdom will, will, will show you that you need to take that money and put it in the ISUPK on the command and journey your hunter, man, and get counsel on what to do with that money so you can build black neighborhoods and build the Hispanic neighborhoods up, man. Make Israel great again, okay? Goddamn America. All right, make Israel great again, and that's and that's what we do in the IHBK, man. Wisdom is defense above all, man. All right, because wisdom it, it gives you the instructions on what to do with with money or what to do with, with, with um, whatever you get in your possession. Wisdom is, a, is the best tool to have, man. All right. Okay, uh, we'll go back to that article. Who got it? Got him, Khan. But also, my bad. What is wisdom according to God? You want it true? No, you got it, sir. I need I need scripture too. What is wisdom according to the most high? Uh so like sir. Um uh for hold on, hold on. Hey, Shabbat, I know you I know you know. Got him, I want to see the, I want to see the trooper know. What is wisdom according to the Most High? The fear of the Lord. Oh, it, it, is, it is. It's very wise to fear God. But what is? What is? Give me a, a, a scripture. What is? What is? What is our wisdom? What, what is the wisdom of Israel? Know what I mean. Oh, um, you talking about Deuteronomy, um, chapter uh, I think twenty eight. 
um, where it says, uh, I, it might not be Deuteronomy th- uh, 28, but I know it's in Deuteronomy. It's, it's uh, for this is your wisdom in the sight among the nations. Sharad is out. Get it for him. Yeah, give him a hand. Damn right, boy. Damn right. Son of God. So Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 6. Go ahead. Come on, come on. I, I got it. Start at 5, true. Come on, come on, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me. The, uh, no, the Lord taught you to love everybody. Lord, the Lord told you to love everybody, every damn body, and he law, his laws are done away with, man. Because you, because you want to be a part of the LGBT community. All right, you want to be a part of the rainbow community. Read. I don't count. I don't count. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. The Lord taught us statutes and judgments. How did he teach the Israelites statutes and judgments and these laws? This Bible. Okay? The Old Testament ain't done away. The New Testament ain't done away. The apocrypha they took out ain't done away. Okay? If you love God, you would love this whole Bible, man. When the Christian when the Christian tell me I'm believing the Old Testament, it's because you don't believe in God. You don't believe in the New Testament neither. You believe in your nasty little lust. When you when you dig down deep into that damn Christian mind, it's all about his desire, his lust, his damn self, man. All right, and that's why you love white people so much because white people love their self, man. Okay. It's all about what they feel at that, at that particular moment. It's all about fulfilling the lust of the flesh, man. Okay? Ain't nothing spiritual about the white man. What's, what's spiritual about the white man? Nothing. Okay? He is very corner-minded, very childish too, man. Very childish and immature. Have no discipline at all, man. And our people, they don't know how to control, control their flesh. Control their demons because they follow the vessel of Satan, man. The white man is the vessel of Satan. He's the vessel of dishonor, man. Okay, you see, when you see the white man, you're looking at the scum of the earth, man. Okay, but you want to be a part of that, and you wonder why they look down on you as a scum of the earth because you you want to be just like these damn devils, man. Okay, we we got to separate, man. We got to separate. I'm talking about real quick. Read warning. Okay. Oh, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Mm hmm. And, th- and this is what we were supposed to do. We, 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 okay, when we went to the land of Canaan. We were supposed to keep these laws and enforce these laws, man. Enforce these laws, this, this is the same way America enforced these laws on us, okay? We were supposed to go to the land of Canaan where the damn Canaanites at. And the Moabites, whatever goddamn Gentile nation, and enforce these laws on them. Okay? Look at the white man, how he enforces, enforces his law in America. Hey, that white man don't give us no mercy, man. He enforces his laws 100%, don't he? He don't slack up. Hey, he going to make sure he enforces his laws so much that he'll put his dog on you and make, and make his dog rip your damn eye out, man. Right. And rip your finger off. That's how bad a white man wants you to keep his law. And that's the same way you should think, black man, about the laws of God. And if we, and if we were to keep our laws, let like the white man keep his damn law, hey, the white man is serious about his laws, man. He's going to make you keep his laws, man. That's how we need to think. But, but instead, we want to say, oh, man, <laughs> the law doesn't done away with, man. But the white man uses his laws as his power. You see that white man did? That white man say, uh, uh, he ran a stop sign, but they, they said they don't know is that true or not. <laughs> but that's him pushing his laws, right? Uh, what else he said? I seen some um some green substance in his car. Blame. He using the law. 
to, to, to his discretion, to his benefit. Black man, when are you going to start using the law to your benefit? Because the law is made for us. You know that, right? The law is made to protect us. It's made to protect us and, and, and uh, make sure that we are on top. Okay, the law has punishment for evildoers. We have no business doing evil, man. We have no business following the other nations, man. We do evil because we follow the white man who is evil by nature. Look what he's doing right now. He went and hunted down an innocent black man. An innocent black man that goes to work. And if he do smoke weed, <laughs> he get it from you. You, you bring that damn weed over here to America. You bring that weed over here for us to sell to one another, man. And then turn around and use it as bait to throw us in jail or to, or to, or to beat us up or to have your damn dog rip us apart and maul our face up, man. That's what they do. All right? But in the kingdom of heaven, I'm going to use so many, so many of my laws, of the lower laws, to beat the damn devil back in. <laughs> If I, if I catch you eating pork, I'm going to beat your back in with that, that damn bull, that bull whip. Yeah. If I catch you eating some oysters, <laughs> I catch you doing anything that the Lord hates, you're going to get your, your back beat in with that damn bull whip, man. Okay? That's how you enforce the laws of God in the kingdom of heaven. The same way he enforces his laws over here on us. All right? But the way he enforces his laws is very, very wicked. Okay? The white man bring these drugs over here just so he can find an excuse to kill you. All right? Or this, this, this destroy you in the mind because if he doesn't kill you, guess what? If you smoke weed, you a slave in the mind. You a dope fiend. When you see a dope fiend, man, they are fiending for this, for this, damn, for this damn drug day and night, right? And, then, and if you're fiending for a drug day and night, how can you protect your damn nation? Huh? How can you protect your nation when you try to roll a damn blunt? You try to find a way to get high. When you high, you're not paying attention. When you're not when you're not sober minded and you're high, you're not paying attention to what's going on around you. Soldiers pay attention to what's going on around them, man, so they can protect their people, right? And that's what the prophets of the Lord do in the ISBK. We are we also are called watchers. How can you watch? When you high as hell, man, can't do it. All right. So what we at now? Uh, I got verse six. Go ahead. Oh, come on. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. This is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, man. God laws. And God laws say stay separated. Stay holy. Holy means to stay separated. Okay? Don't unite. God damn that Martin Luther King dream, man. Always stay separate. And that's why the ISBK, we do not let heathens inside our school. Okay? When they when they come to the door, we like, what the heck, hey man, what you want? You can't come in here? You cannot come in here. We don't need we don't need you in here. Can can black people have anything to themselves? Can Hispanic people have anything to themselves, man? Okay, you can't come in here. The, the, the gate is strong in the ISB tape. The ISBK. Our gate is strong. Our gates are not weak. Our, our gates do not languish. Okay, we gonna protect our people, man. All right, you you can call us Power Rangers. You 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 call us Black Ranger or, or Luke Kane, all that, all that. Just know a Power Ranger and Luke Kane, they fight. <laughs> just know that they, 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 these two people I just named, they fight, okay. And, and that's what we do. We fight for our people, man. You got anything to say, Aunt Well, I was just thinking about um, <clears throat> when you was talking about the law, sir. How if the white man was so righteous, man. You gotta think about it. You know, he wants to he wants to give you uh the death penalty and according to his law 
for for certain crimes. You know what I mean? He want to give you the death penalty, like he did Emmett Till when Emmett Till didn't even do a goddamn thing. You know right. what I'm saying? But who the hell is gonna give him the death penalty? If he was such a righteous man, he need to kill himself. Then he need to give himself the death penalty because right. of what his forefathers did to 77 million uh, Native Indians, what they did to 100 million uh, Negroes on the voyage on the transatlantic slave trade. Right. Who gonna kill him since he out here giving everybody the death penalty and, and trying to uphold himself? so righteous and whatnot you know what i mean by his own law he need to kill his damn self right but he ain't gonna, he gonna, he ain't gonna do that he ain't gonna do that these the devils they, they, they did is coming they did is coming believe that the our lord is only a sinful kingdom but uh, where we at now warrior okay we gonna drop that scripture let's, let's get back to this article man come, come. get back to this article this is Palm Beach. Come, come. I'm on the I'm on the bottom. I'm on the paragraph under the clipping. All right. It says, from the early 1890s until about 1912, as many as 2,000 African Americans lived in an area known as the Sticks. Right. A, mm -hmm. Go ahead. A settlement near what is currently the intersection of North County Road and Royal Panisiana Way. This site is near Flagler's two hotels. The Royal. It's a Flagler's two hotels. Flagler's two hotels, man. Right. All right. Are we on? The Royal Poinciana and the Breakers, like other black areas near urban centers, it lacks adequate services. It lacks adequate services, man. That that means the services wasn't good. Okay, adequate means good enough. When when, it, when uh, anything lacks being adequate, it's not their services is not good. Okay, go ahead. Come on, come. According to Clark, Flagler never planned to have workers living on the island, black or white. But when the building was alone, I mean, so like, but when the building was all done. The whites still had a need for them. The service, the menial work that was black. The what? The menial work that the was me, black. The menial work. What, what do menial work mean? Chuba Razan? Like sweeping the floors and cleaning the toilets. And... So, what, what is, what, okay, you're right. So, what is menial work? Like the base work, like the smallest he, work. Let's go home. Let's go home. Slave work. Kind of kind. Slave work. Cause that was slaves do the menial work. Kind of kind. Right. Like beds and stuff. Kind of kind. Yeah. The the the, the uh, stuff that they, the stuff that they feel like is beneath them. Go ahead. Kind of kind. Most tenants it's, of the start from the service. No, no, start from the service, the menial work. The, the service, the menial work that was black. Well, and, and, you, see, you see what it says right here? The, mini, the menial work that was black. Slave work. Read. It says, Go ahead. most tenants of the sticks are single men or heads of households who stay in town during the work week, but have families living in the area that becomes West Palm Beach. Uh -huh. Read. African Americans rent their homes in the sticks from white landlords. The area is so, owned by- they, they, they have, they have, When they pay rent, right? But actually they didn't really pay rent like that because you know, they, 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 they got paid and the white man felt like paying them, but you know, by them working over there, they always have a place, place to stay. But their landlord was white, okay? But white people didn't stay in, on the island of Palm Beach. Black people stayed over there, okay, at, at this time. But go ahead and read. Come, come. African Americans rent their homes and the sticks from white landlords. The area is owned by brothers Edward R. and John R. Bradley. 
Local whites portrayed the black settlement as an eyesore, a place of lawlessness and squalor. Oh, let's, 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 let's slow that down. Let's slow that down. Read it again. Come, come. Local whites portrayed the black settlement as an eyesore. Local whites see the sticks as an eyesore. Okay, this, this this place was so was so tore down and so disgusting. It was it was a sore sight. It was a sore sight to look at. Okay, it was a sore sight to look at. We don't. Got on come a place of lawlessness and squalor. A place of lawless, lawlessness. A place where the law is not being pushed much. It's not really being pushed. Some like the ghetto, okay. Negroes they get away with some of the dope in the ghetto because don't nobody care about those negroes. Sell dope to your own people. I don't. I don't care. It's not my people. As long as you stay over there selling that dope, I don't give a damn. The law is not pushed in the ghetto because they don't care about that place having order. They want us to destroy one another, and this, and this happened over here in the neighborhood called Sticks. This black community called the Sticks. Read. A place of lawlessness and squalor in Miami. Squalor, squalor, squalor. What do, squalor? do anybody know what squalor means? Squalor. Go ahead. A, a place that's extremely dirty. Yeah, extremely dirty. All right. Horrible, horrible, horrible conditions. Okay. We don't. Call a car. In Miami, white Miamians use the same terms to describe the black settlement called Colored Town. Oh, stop right there. Do anybody know the name? The the name right now for Colored Town because they changed the name of Colored Town. It's not Colored Town no more. Call a car. Go ahead, Warren. Overtime. Overtown, Rick Ross, huh? <laughs> this is where he's from. All right, read on. Kind of car. A settlement for African American working on the railroad in the southeastern okay. section. In the southeastern section of Lake Worth and Palm Beach County, Samuel. Oh, 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 okay, you hear, hear about Lake Worth? Razan, Trooper Razan, and um, Itazar, they are from Lake Worth. And you finna read about Lake Worth, all right? Lake Worth is a city right next door to West Palm Beach. When you leave West Palm Beach, going south, you are in the city of Lake Worth. But Razan, did you know that a black couple used to own Lake Worth? No, uh -uh, sir. You can read, read about it right now. It was, a, it was a black couple, man. A black couple. Okay, go ahead, Shabazza. Kind of a car. In the southeastern section of Lake Worth in Palm Beach County, Samuel and Fanny Jones, a black couple, owned most of the town named Jewel. Say that again. A black couple owned most of the town named Jewel. 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 And they also, they also, these, this black couple, they owned the post office. Oh, they're, they're in charge of the post office. In uh, West Palm or Lake Worth, okay, from my research. But don't hold me on that. Don't hold me on that. It might have just been West Palm, all right? But read on. Connor Wakan. They obtained a federal patent and settled there. Huh. And they obtained a federal patent. What's another word for? A federal patent. 
copyrights. Copyrights. Okay. All right. What, what, do you know what copy, what's the definition of copyrights? If you if you have invent something, right? And you and you have copyrights for what you invented, what, what's the definition of that? I got it, sir. Go ahead. Uh copyright. The exclusive legal right given to an originator or an assignee to print or publish an inventor. Inventor. Uh, originate originator or inventor. Go ahead. Uh, to print, publish, perform, film, or record literary, artistic, or musical material, and to authorize others to do the same. Okay. There's not there's not another definition. Uh, let me see. What's your definition, Shwantaza? For copyright. Yeah. It's copyright is like legal. Um it's like you're the uh you're the founder, like you're the progenitor, the originator of of that invention or it's your idea. It's you you founded it. Like you it's it's yours. You know what I mean? Right. So they have so they have to give you something in in paper saying like this is yours, you know what I'm saying? So in the future anybody no one can claim it later on in the future no one can say it's theirs right right damn right all right and uh this couple had a, a federal patent a patent which, which was uh basically uh the originator copyrights i mean they had copyrights you can't, all right? So uh, read on. Got him, got him. They obtained a federal patent and settled there in 1890. Fanny Jones is the town's postmaster until 1912 when postal officials removed her from her post. And, and you know why she got removed, right? She got removed because eventually they took over late work, all right? They took they took over late birth. Either they gave her what they want to give her on the money tip, and they took that city, all right, and removed her from uh from her seat as being in charge or the originator of the post office, all right. And late birth used to be called the town of Jewel. So now you now you know the uh the origin of late birth. Uh, Trooper Razan. Right. All right. Go ahead, Shabbatza. We got. Hey, we got. Any, hey, we got any scriptures? Any scriptures we need to read? Conor McCon. Uh, we could pull Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight and sixteen. Go ahead. Oh. Um. Okay. Before that one, uh, Jer let's do Jeremiah 17 and 4. Go ahead. Oh, Con. Can you hear me? Go Con. ahead. Oh, Con. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause Ooh. thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Hey man, if we don't know by now that we are serving our enemies, man, you the fool, man. You the fool, you're a straight out fool. Everything that we make, everything that we create, everything that we have, we always have to give it up for a little bit of nothing, man. Why? Because these people are our enemies. They don't never want you to be successful. They don't want you to have Jack, man. They want to, hey, when you share something with the white man, he going to take everything. You better believe that. He not going to leave you with nothing. Because he wants heaven. And he know heaven is being on top of everybody. Okay? You are over here serving your enemies. 
Hey, you don't have to believe you're a slave. One thing every black man and Hispanic man have to agree, agree with me on, one thing that you have to agree with me on, that you cannot argue with me on, is that you are on the bottom. And if you are on the bottom, you're the slave, man. The servant or, or whatever you want to call it. You ain't on top and you dance over here in the middle. Okay? I don't I don't see Arab, East Indian, none of these nations with a policeman sicking their damn dog on, on them. They, they, they're sicking the dog on us, right? They beat not behind. They are hunting our steps. Okay? When they, when they see an African, they have a conversation with him, an East Indian, they have a conversation with him, let him go. They don't terrorize them. And why don't they terrorize the other nations? Do y'all know? Why, why, don't the, the one, why don't the white man terrorize the Africans and the, and the Arab man that, that's over here in America? It's a lot, sir. Go ahead. Because, I mean, he he knows that there will be hell to pay. Like they going like their people are united. They gonna come after. They're gonna gather. They, that's right. They are gonna gather themselves together. <laughs> they gonna gather themselves together. All right. They gonna hey, They gonna have a meeting. Okay. And if they don't like what they hear, they gonna they gonna call back to their, their main country. They are gonna call Africa. They are gonna call China. And now, and guess what? China, China and Africa, they got a military. And they're going to they talk about fighting and stuff. And America, even though America's a superpower, they don't want that smoke. So you know what? They're not going to beat that African up. Because they know that African has a nation. Okay? He has a military. He has a people that loves him. A, a people that going to stand up for, for, for him. You feel me? But when, when they kill one of us, Hey, what's gonna happen? Our people gonna defend them. They're not gonna defend, they're not gonna defend their brother. They're gonna defend that white man. Okay? They what, what happened when Dylan Roof killed them people in that Christian church? What did they, what did the Christian pastor say about Dylan Roof on uh, Did they say did they say did they say, did they say, did they say Dylan Roof died? What what did they say about Dylan Roof? They killed all the Christians. In South Carolina. They said we what got to they, what they said they gonna do for him. They said they gotta pray for him. Damn yeah, right, give him a hand. <laughs> give him a hand. I mean they say they say they're gonna pray for Dylan Roof. They're gonna pray for Dylan Roof, man. But let your black behind kill one kill a white man. If they gonna pray for you, what are they gonna do to you? <laughs> you go ahead. If you if you was a killer white man, what would they do to you? Would they pray for you? Razan? No, uh -huh, sir. What, what are you gonna do? They're gonna they gonna kill they're gonna kill everybody that look like like me. <laughs> hey, they're they gonna put their canine on you. <laughs> they're gonna put their canine dog on you. <laughs> hey, they're gonna put sissy bullet, they're gonna put sissy bullets in your black in your back. Hey, what, what that happened there, um, Shabbat Zah? That brother they, they, they shot 60 times, man. You said the brother you you, you said what happened that? No. Oh, are you talking about uh uh Jalen Walker? Yeah. Yeah, that, that yeah, brother yeah. they shot 60 times, man. God. They, yeah, they, they, when you when you kill the e devils, they're not gonna forget what you do to them. They they remember what you do to them, man. You better you, be, you better remember nine eleven. What you say, Warrior? That was in Ohio, sir. Salaki. That was in Ohio. Okay. Same place. Hey. Same, same, place same place. Flagler from, man. <laughs> Damn right, boy. Damn right. So let's uh let's read on in this article, all right? Who got it? Connor McCon. I'm gonna start at 1904-1912, the strategy of eminent domain and eviction. Meanwhile, okay, uh 
Oh, Shiraz is on. Oh, Tuba was on. Y'all, y'all break down intimate domain. Intimate domain. Do y'all know what that means? Intimate domain? Call him a call. Go ahead. Intimate domain is like it's like uh gentrification, like buying out your property, like giving you money to buy you out of your home to build a uh, commercial residence and businesses or, or do what you want with it. Right. They 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 using they using them how to build commercial residence or something that's gonna benefit the city to get you out of the way. Either you either you can take the money that they uh, offer you or they just give you the money and, and just knock down your house. Either way, you got to go. All right? Because your house or your land can benefit the city by you moving. Okay? And, and them building their establishment on your land that they just took. Okay? That's intimate domain. That's right. Kind of a Meanwhile, the sticks has become a place that some want to go away as this clipping from February 26, 1903 documents. It reads, the good citizens of North Miami and at Palm Beach will petition the legislature to wipe from existence a community known as the sticks. Oh, where you at, where you at, where you at? Where you at? Uh, I'm, I'm at 1904 and 1912, the strategy of eminent domain and eviction. It's like at the bottom. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, at the bottom. Well, uh, yeah, I see. Go ahead. Kind of calm. Then it says, from, from accounts, it needs being done away with. That was the clipping I just read. The clip. Mm -hmm. Now it says, according to urban legend, in 1910, the railroad uh, mogul Flagler starts a. No, read, no, read, no, read what it says. Meanwhile, the state has become a place. Got okay. Meanwhile, the stick has become a place that some want to go away, as this clipping from February 26, 1903 documents. Go ahead. The good citizens of North Miami and at Palm Beach will petition the legis the legislature to wipe from existence a community known as the Sticks. From accounts, it needs being done away with. Okay, so what, so what they're saying right here? What they're saying right here? Is, right now, at the time, Palm Beach was not a county. Palm Beach was a place that was in. North Miami, all right, because Palm Beach was in the county then, it was a part of Miami. Understand, all right. And these people of North Miami, uh, they they seen the states as a as a problem that need to be erased. Okay, and uh, they basically got rid of black people. They gentrified. The island of Palm Beach all the way with white people. Understand? That's what happened. But they use they use the conditions of the sticks as an excuse to burn down that place, saying that that the place looked horrible. The place looked, it looked disgusting, and um, it made the, it made Palm Beach look bad, and it needed to be wiped away, and that's what they did. Okay, and, and guess what? They're still doing that today. They still do that today. When, when they let they let certain areas get horrible and people start complaining about the area, and the city say, you know what? We're gonna knock down that neighborhood and build up some new places. But guess what? The new places they'll move black people into new places. They move white people into new places, and they'll they'll push you far out west somewhere. Okay, that's what they do. That's what they did to the black people of, of the sticks. They, they burned their houses down and put them Mount West to uh, to Pleasant City and West Palm Beach. Okay, that's what they did, and that's what they're still doing today. Okay, even in uh, 
all black cities like Atlanta. Atlanta, they they, they just find Atlanta. Can you believe that? They are just find Atlanta right now. Can you believe that? And, and everybody knows Atlanta is a black city, right? You 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 will go to Decatur or you'll go to Atlanta right now, and you might just see a white person walking they they dog in that black neighborhood, man. <laughs> and normally they wouldn't do that, right? Normally, what do white people do when they see a black person in their neighborhood? They move, right? But now they come up with a strategy to come in your neighborhood and to move you out. And how do they move black people out now? Do they burn your house down? How do they move black people out now? Think about it. What, what, what are they doing right now in Atlanta to get black people out of Atlanta? It's a lot of Go ahead. I know one way is they, they, they raise the rent. Give them a hand. That's what they do. They raise the rent. They raise the rent. That's all. And, and guess what? They know you're going to move. I ain't got to burn your house down. I'm, I just raise the rent up. You're going to move. <laughs> you're going to leave. You ain't even to pay, even, even pay me all that rent money. But to a white man, that means nothing to, nothing to him to pay that rent money. Because he got it. You don't. Okay, let, let's go back to the article. Gone, gone. It says, according to urban legend, in 1910, the railroad mogul Flagler starts a rumor. The railroad, the railroad mogul Flagler. What, what do mogul mean? Mogul means a powerful, a powerful man, a powerful businessman. Flatwood was very, very powerful in building the railroad of Southeast Florida. Okay? Southeast Florida got a lot of business, man. All right? And because of Henry Flatwood, this is this is right now. This right now is this the day. This railroad that go all the way up. I, I think this railroad go past Jacksonville, if I ain't mistaken. Right? The railroad that he built. Oh, it stops at Jacksonville. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure, sir. Yeah, I think okay. I remember they took, they took boats to come down here. I don't know if it was mm -hmm. just the workers or, but it didn't mention that part about it going up to Jacksonville. Yeah, we we gonna have to, we gonna have to do some research on that. Okay, we gonna do some research on that. But go ahead, Connor McCon. It says. Mogul Flagler starts a rumor that spreads through, throughout the sticks. African Americans hear that they'll receive a free ticket to a circus that is coming to the. Hey, hey hold on, hold on. Before hey, this is the this is the meat of the story, you know, right? This is the meat of the story. So when we get down to the root of the story, we gotta read it slow, are you? Slow and powerful. Because this is this is what I want everybody to know what happened to this black community called the Sticks of Palm, of Palm Beach. Okay, this, this is what I want black people to know to get what happened. All right, go ahead. Kind of I'm gonna start from the top. According to urban legend, in 1910, the rail the railroad. According to urban legend. According to urban legend. What are they trying to say when they say urban legend? They, they, no, you, you know what this sound like to me? So this this sound like a white man going in the woods, right? And uh, making a circle and starting a campfire and just telling a story that never happened. When this did happen, right? But he's trying to make this out of a, a fairy tale, a folklore, a mystery, right? This could this could be this could be science fiction. This could never have probably never happen. They don't know. This is something that people just say. But this is them trying to trying their best to erase history. Okay? Erase something that happened to us a long time ago. Something that is very, very horrific that happened to black people, all right? What what happened in the Sticks of Palm Beach? They don't want you to remember. Because it made them look bad. But uh, Trooper Razan 
Hey, uh, Shabbat is on. Hold, hold this, right? Triple Razan, get Obadiah Ob one and ten. I don't count, sir. See, because us in the ISBK, we we gonna bring up all these lost stories, all this lost history that happened in Florida, Florida, that happened all over the earth. Back in these devil faces, man. All right. The book of Obadiah, chapter one, verse ten. Yeah. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, because the white man is Esau. The white man is the Edomite. Okay? And we are Jacob. For your violence against Jacob. For your violence on the on the island of Palm Beach, burning our houses down. All we had was little sh shanties. All we had a little wooden uh little wooden shacks. We can't, we, the white man, he didn't even want you with a wooden shack. He had to burn that down. That was so violent. It was so violent for you to say, hey, come over here across the bridge. I'm throwing a party. Okay? I know black people like to party. I'm going to tell you I got a party over here, man. And then send a mob of white people. You might, you might as well say the KKK to burn our houses down, man. For your violence against your brother Jacob. Who is the so-called black and Spanish named American Indians? Read. Colonel Khan, shame shall cover thee. And this is the shame that's going to cover you. Okay? You think you just could get away with all the murder, all the rape, robbing, and stealing you did, and don't nobody bring it back up? No, we bringing it back up. And shame is covering you. You don't want to hear it. So, so you know what you did? You know the white man did? The white man, he, he bring it out. I, a bill right now, a bill that can stop, and, and that's going to stop critical race theory, okay? The white man is trying to stop critical race theory. What is critical race theory? I'm going to let y'all brothers get the flow. What, what is critical race theory that this white man is trying to stop in these schools, man, in places of business? What is this critical race theory that he hates so much? Lock it, sir. Go ahead. Uh, critical race theory is basically um, teaching the truth about what happened during slavery. Right. Reminding white people's children <laughs> hey, <laughs> reminding white people's children about their mama and their daddy. <laughs> and they don't like it. <laughs> white, hey, white people, go, white people, look, these little white kids, little white devils, they go, they go to school and they got little black friends, Right? And then they go into the classroom and they're learning about Kuta Kente. They're learning about roots. And the black kids looking at the white kids like, damn, this, this is what y'all did to us? And, and now the white kids looking back at their parents like, damn, you are some monsters. And now the parents, they feel shame. Now the parents is going to the government and saying, you have to stop this. You have to stop it now. <laughs> you have to stop it. Because my son and my daughter is coming back home looking at me like I'm a monster. But you are a monster. You are a monster. And guess what? Little Timmy going to grow up to be a monster. Huh? Little Karen is going to grow up to be a monster. And you need, you need to be, to be reminded that you are a monster. You are a monster. Okay? Everybody knows you're a monster and you need that shame. Hey, maybe if the white man get that shame, maybe maybe he'll stop killing us in the street, man. Huh? Maybe he will stop, right? You know he ain't gonna stop. So, since he's not gonna stop, let this shame keep covering him, man. Let the whole earth know. You know man, let me tell you something. The whole earth already know that white man is the devil the Bible speaks up. It's black and Hispanic people that don't want to admit that the white man is the devil. The China man know. The African man know. Everybody, everybody knows the white man is the goddamn devil, man. But us, blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians, we don't want to accept it, man. Okay? So it's, it's, a, it's very important that critical race theory stays in the school. All right? It's very important. But this bill that came out, this act, this brand new law, it prohibits the teachings of critical race theory. 
And this bill is called Stop, Stay Woke. Stop, Stay Woke. Y'all write this down. This, this bill came out in uh, July 1st in Florida, man. In Florida, in Florida, in the state of Florida, you are not allowed to teach about critical race theory, man. Okay? And it's very important that you know this. Because when you see your, when you see your kids in school, they are not learning about what happened. So guess what? It's our job. Oh, man. All right. Okay, the screen just went on blank. Okay, there you go. So wh where we at now? Baba Kishon? Kind of, kind of. Um, I can finish up that verse if you want. Go ahead. And thou shall be cut off forever. Oh, man. Thou shall be cut off forever. The, the Lord says shame going to come for you. First, right, right now, the shame is covering Esau now because the ISBK under the manager in your honor, we let the whole earth know about the crimes of the white man, okay? And guess what? Shame going to cover him too because he is going into slavery when Christ comes back. Christ is going to bring shame to the white man. And also, that slavery that, that's going to get placed to the white man is going to wipe him out forever. Well, his whole nation going to just die off. Because white people can't endure slavery like black people can. They can't be in that cotton field. They can't do what we do and still survive and still live, man. Okay? White people can't go through that. You know what white people do? White people would throw themselves off a damn building. They would, they would hang themselves. They would shoot themselves in the head, man, before they, before they serve a nigga forever. You better believe that. All right? And they're going to be wiped out forever. The white man going to be in a museum like the dinosaur. He going to be a relic. Okay, he, my, my son and your son, Shuba Razan and Shiraz Azar, they're going to be like, what is that? And we're going to be like, that, that, that was a white man. He existed a long time ago. <laughs> the white man, gonna become, he, he's going to become the dodo bird. Y'all remember the dodo bird? <laughs> the white man going to become the damn dodo bird, man. He's going to be a steak. And he, and he deserves it. How many, how, how many animals did the white man put into the station? Huh? How many animals did the white man put into extinction? You can't even count. He deserved he deserve extinction, man. All right? So uh, where we at? Uh, Shwadis, you had something to say? No, nah, nah, sir. All right, where we at now? Um, in the article, I said, according to urban legend in 1910, the railroad mogul Flagler starts a rumor that spreads throughout the sticks. After now, it says, hey, pay attention closely. Pay attention closely. It says that Henry Flagler started this rumor. All right? Read. African Americans hear that they are received a free ticket to a circus that is coming to the mainland. When they are away, their homes are burned to the ground. Some historians dispute this account. And why would the historians who are white dispute this account? Dispute is another word for arguing. Arguing, you know what I mean? Not agreeing to what happened, but why? because basically um, just white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. right. And also, they, they are ashamed of what they did. They're ashamed. They, they want nobody to know about that. They want nobody to know about that. Okay? Uh, Razor, give me uh, Daniel 7 and 25. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Okay. Now, you know the historians are, are white. They're white. Okay? And this is what the white man do, man. He try to erase history, but keep his history of his glory, his victories. Okay? 
but he don't want to. He don't want to let you know when you was great. All right, he, he want to erase that. But let's get that scripture. Come on, come on. The book of Daniel, chapter seven, and verse twenty-five. Uh huh. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Yeah. Go ahead. And, sh and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Right. And think to change times and laws. Think to change times and laws. Okay. This is what the historians plan to do when they disputing this history. When they try to wipe away the history of the sticks, they are they are changing times and laws, man. My bad, not laws. They are changing times right here, not the laws. They are changing times. The white man has power to change times. And he has power to wear out the saints. Who are the saints? The people that are waiting for the oppressors to go into captivity. That's us, man. We are the saints. That is the patience of the saints. That's in Revelation 13 and 9, correct? All right? We are the saints, man. Read, read this article. Read on. Connor McCaw. West Palm Beach says the sticks must go. Good idea. Miami has some such places that it would be a charitable and righteous act to wipe out. Ah, man. Ah, man. So this was going on in West Palm and Miami at the same time. All right? Damn. Man, I, I remember, I don't, I don't know if y'all remember this neighborhood in um, Riviera Beach called uh, Bravo. I don't know if y'all remember it, but it, it was it, it was a little place they they walked it away. They tore it down, man. It's so many communities I know that they tore down, man. Right in my face when I was a child. When I was a child. And, and, they, and they're not they are not done. They are not done. There are gonna be more communities that they tear down and gentrify. Okay? And and that's why it's so important that we separate and come out from among them, man. Okay? And don't and don't practice their holidays. Don't go stay at that Christian church, man. Come to the ISBK and we and we build our own communities, man. We have our own businesses. Because I'm showing you the record, the white man history of our relationship in America. We never got along and we still not getting along, man. It's been 500 years and we still don't get along, man. Hey, I'm done. I'm done. And, I, and my people, in their mind, they should make up in their mind that they should be done too, man. All right? Anything left on that on article, Shabbatazah? Khan on Khan. My phone had one. My uh, laptop went out for a minute. It said, uh -huh. what can be verified is that in 1904, local police began a project to clear out African-American residents of the sticks as mentioned in this newspaper clipping from the same year. Damn. Is, is it the police? Mm -hmm. Is it the local police, man? Hey, black man, you can never ever be a gangster. Hey, you suck at being a gangster. These are the real gangsters here, man. This, this is the real mob right here. Okay? When they do something, they do something and they get away with it. But when we do something, do we get away with it? Huh? Matter of fact, what we do, we, we do it inside of ourselves. Like a black man would kill another black man. But let, let a cripple or blood go kill a white man. He going in that jailhouse, right? But these policemen went to the states of Palm Beach and killed and got away with it. My bad, not killed. They burnt down the, those, those shanty houses, man, and got away with it. All right. Read. Come on, come on. Sheriff Frohawk brought down from Palm Beach last night another Negro charged with selling liquor unlawfully. The sheriff reports that active work in cleaning out the famous sticks has been commenced. 
So they they use oh, hey, they use this black man selling selling liquor to burn down the sticks. Hey, but I got a question: Who made the liquor? Hmm. I know I know some of us we we made a little bit of liquor, but who made the most of the liquor? All right. Who got big old plants and stuff? Big old plants that they made liquor. They, they, they make look at. They make beer at. You know what I mean, who who owns Budweiser? <laughs> huh? Why white, white people do? We don't own this. We don't own none of this stuff. They create this stuff, but they charge. They, they charge this man with having liquor. They say this man selling liquor inside his community. Okay, we, that they will give us the excuse to burn down his community by him selling, selling liquor. Something that we gave to him. Read on. Son of God. All squatters have been served with oh, notice. Oh, Lord. <laughs> squatters. Say, say it again. Squatters. Squatters. Do you know what a squatter is? Anybody? Do you, do you know what a squatter is? A squatter. So like it, sir. Go ahead. It's somebody that lives in a place and they just live in there like a like you know, they you could be like a homeless person, pretty much. Right. You ain't paying you 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 actually all right, not paying no rent. You you went into this abandoned place and started living there without paying nothing. You squatted, right? But these people was paying the white man, right? But now the white man calling them squatters. How did these black people become squatters? Do y'all know? Exactly. Go ahead. When they, they, they burnt down their homes. No, this, 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 was, so, this was so that their houses got burnt down. They say these, these are black people are squatters. Think about it. Salaki, so sir. Right. Uh, they wasn't getting paid. And why were white people not getting paid for these black people that, that they call squatters? Because they was working them like slaves. Not right here. Okay, what happened? Okay, say say you rent a place for me, right? You paying me rent, Shirazza, and um, uh, I turn around and say I don't want your money no more. I want you to get out. I want you to go. And you like, hey, I'm not going nowhere. So now I'm not taking your money no more. And you've been in my house for like, or my apartment for like three three to four months, and you're not paying rent. What what are you now? What what have you become? You're not you're not you're not a tenant no more because you're not paying no rent to me. I'm not taking your rent money no more. You're not a tenant, but you're still staying in my establishment. What have you became or become? So lucky, sir. You became a squatter. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say Go squatter. You became a squatter. Uh, the, the reason why I know about squatters because Philadelphia had squatters, and um, down here in Jacksonville, believe it or not, down here in Jacksonville, they have squatters. Like, okay, squatting is legal in Philadelphia. It's legal. Like, if somebody leave a place abandoned, and you go in there and stay, they can, can, the police can't come kick you out. Because ain't nobody claiming the place. You can stay there. You, you can sleep there. It's legal in Philadelphia and Jacksonville. It's legal, but it's not. It's illegal in, in um, other places, though. Okay. And right here in the states of Palm Beach, it was illegal. Uh, but go ahead, Shabbat Shalom. You go ahead and finish reading. God, oh God. It says all squatters have been served with notices to quit and an extensive. Hegeria, Hegeria, from that fragrant section will take place within a day or two. Oh man, 
Do you, do you, do you anybody know what that word mean? Hegeria? Kind of a car. Go ahead. It's like a journey to escape a, a dangerous situation. And, and, um, and, why that, <laughs> and why that situation got dangerous? Because, you know, Esau is trying to, you know, um, Esau is trying to kill him. Uh, burning house is burning. Right. And um, basically, he said, uh, we, we left, we left, we left uh, the top part of the game, he said, I think he told him to quit, told him to quit, uh, working their job or whatever. Yeah, you, you just said told him to quit. Okay. All squatters have been served with <laughs> notice to quit and an extensive hijra from that fragrant section will take place within a day or two. So, so basically, um, the white man wanted them gone. He wanted them gone. And uh, like uh, Shwata said, uh, Hygeria, why do you pronounce that word? It's a long, long journey from a, from a bad condition. You're trying to escape a bad situation, but it's a long journey. You have a long journey from that bad situation. Okay. <clears throat> up, up in Palm Beach, we know that it's a long journey over that bridge, right? <laughs> from Palm Beach to West Palm, right? Over, from from uh, Palm Beach to Pleasant City, right? That's a long journey. And they had a long journey from a bad condition because their houses got burnt down. And now they're homeless. They got nowhere to stay. Okay, read on. Got him, God. Fires in the sticks were indeed taking place in 1904, too. And the fire department was not putting them out. Oh, man. And you know, you know why the fire department didn't put the fires out? Because they want them houses to burn. Read on. God of God. Many people were disturbed from their slumbers Tuesday night by the alarm <coughs> fire. It was soon located in the sticks at Palm Beach and reported a small fire. So the company did not go across the bridge. According right. to TT. Uh, that's it. I mean, no, 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 no. so there's about three paragraphs left. Okay, we we gonna start right here. You got, you got anything to say on that on that um on that clipping right there? That clipping on that paragraph? It's an echo right here in the class. Yeah, probably because mine was uh, unmuted. It was unmuted. Okay, but you got anything to say? on that paragraph uh, man I just want to say this you know this alone just to show you know um, black Hispanics and Native Indians man that Esau is in allegiance with each other man and they all they all are conspired they come together man to destroy you you know what I mean so don't think you're going to get any justice in this place because this has been going on for, for centuries, this is a 19th century, 18th century. You know what I mean? So, all right, all right, all right. You're right. right. It's happening in the 18th, uh, 19th century, man. You know what I mean, and uh, um, these, these devils, uh, these devils, right? They don't want you to remember what happened, man. Uh, me and myself, us in the ISBK, Florida. We plan on bringing out a lot of this lost history, all this forgotten history in Florida to bring it back out from uh, black babies being Gator Bay, uh, Rosewood. Y'all give me some more. Uh, Colored Town. Uh, what Seminole. else? Oh, man. I like you brought that out. The Seminole, the Seminole Wars, man. Hey, man, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's so much forgotten history, man. Uh, Axe Hunt, Axe Hunt on Saturday. Axe Hunt on Saturday. That happened in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, man, it's so much. It's so much, man. And uh, 
we plan on coming out with a lot of classes about this forgotten history, man. This lost history in Florida, okay? And with that, uh, Shabbat Shalom, you got anything to say? Uh, Trooper Razan, anything to say? No, nah, sir. No, nah, sir. Okay. And with that, man, the water, the water for y'all uh, participation, man. And, uh, hey, man, I really wanted to bring out this class, man, because uh, what, what happened over there at Palm Beach, a lot of people forgot about it. A lot of people don't know about it, you know. But us at ISBK, hey, we, we dig up the past, man. We dig it up. We dig it up because the white man don't want you to know what happened. And, and it's so important that black people don't forget the racism of America, man. Okay? These school systems don't want ra that, that racism to be known. Okay? But it, it's our job to bring it out. Okay? And with that, we are the ISBK of the Command Journey of Hunter, coming out of 125th Street, Hunter, New York. Shalom. Shalom.